you doing? This is Coffee Chug, and I'm here again to give you a quick tutorial. This was something that we were working on with a bunch of educators thinking about the code connection with Minecraft education. And I had the amazing Mark Grindel um, Skype in with our teachers. Unfortunately, the video got lost in my computer somehow. It got corrupted and it won't play. So I'm, I'm not taking credit for the idea, um, but we're going to go ahead and do this again because it was so good that I think it's a great lesson to help other educators as well as students learn the basics of coding. And so I'm just going to go ahead and turn this here to always day just so it's easier to see um, in this world. And so what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and pull up the code connection. So we're going to type in backslash code and it should load up my code connection here. And we're going to use make code here for this particular pr project. And let me go ahead and mute down this the music here um, so you don't listen to this the whole time. So go ahead and drop this down here. There we go. That'll be a little bit easier for you to probably hear and listen. And then we're going to go ahead and drag this code connection over this way. So as we think about our code connection here, we're going to go to a new project. And the first thing that we're going to do here, we're going to go ahead and create a couple commands for our agent. And the, the challenge that we have is how do we make a square? And so I'm going to kind of work you through the thinking process, not just the answer right away, um, but just so you can kind of understand some ways in which you can have these conversations with kids. The very first thing that we would do if I was in a classroom is we would physically do this, kind of like the unplugged activity that you can find online for unplugged computer science. You can use Lego bricks for each little... Um, each little circular part of the uh, of the Lego could represent a block, and we would talk about like how could we physically, with our human bodies, make a square. And so we talk about how many steps. You know, say you wanted to make um, a 10 by 10 square, um, so a perimeter of 40. What would we have to do? We have to take 10 steps. We have to turn right, take 10 steps, turn right. And as we go through that, we're going to be able to debug our coding and programming, so kids start to realize that computers and coding is only as smart as we are. So let's jump into this code here in the code connection. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type in one for this TPA and this is going to stand for to teleport our agent. So I'm going to go here to the agent and we're just going to bring this block in. So what this will do is when I type in TPA it's going to teleport my agent to me. And so he's right here but if I go ahead and move away We'll just jump over here. There he is. Now, if I go into the chat command and I type in TPA, he will come to me. And so this allows a command that just makes it easier to kind of work with. And what I like about the agent is that we can physically see the code happen when we work with our agent. And so this is really good, especially for younger kids to kind of see. So we're going to go over here to player and we're going to create a new chat command. And I'm just going to call this S for square. And we would talk with kids. Okay, so in order to make a square, what does our agent have to do? And we say he has to move forward 10. Okay, so let's do that. So let's move our agent forward by 10. And then what do we need to do? Well, he needs to turn. And some kids will overlook this depending on your class, but we need to get that in here. He has to turn his body. Do we want to turn right? Do we want to turn left? It doesn't really matter. And then, what else now will you do? Well, we got to go 10 again. And so you can have this conversation of breaking it down with kids about how to make a square. So they're going to tell you they're going to want to turn right again. And then, well, we got to do this again, right? So we can see this is getting a little monotonous, but it's going to help them understand. And so as they're either physically walking it through in the space, if you have one that, that's, that's long enough or big enough for them to do this, or if you're doing it with Legos or something else, you know, whatever it is that you need to do to help them see this. And so we're going to go forward one more time by 10. All right. So in our code, when we type S, he's going to go forward S, or forward 10, turn right, forward 10, turn right, forward right, forward 10, turn right, forward 10. And we should have him build a square, correct? So we go here to resume. We type in T for our code. We hit S, and away he goes. 
but we we don't see a square here, do we? He just walked the perimeter. He just kind of walked the grid. And so there's our first bug. Well, how do we actually get him to make a square? So after some conversation, the kids will hopefully figure out that, oh, we have to actually tell him to put a block in. So we have to go here to agent, and we're going to tell him that we need to place on the move. And see how this is false? We're going to say, do we need that false or true? Oh, we need it true. Oh, okay. So let's go back here, type in S, see what happens. And there he goes. Doing the block, making the grid, All right? But there we go. But he still didn't uh, make it move, right? So how do we change this? How do we get what we're finding here is that he is actually still not placing the box, right? So when I run my code, he's taken off. He's going in the square. I have him to place it on true, so he should be placing blocks, but he's not. So we need to go back and have that conversation with kids. Why is he still not placing the blocks? So let's take a look at our agent here. And if we right click him, we can see that he doesn't actually own anything. So let's do this. Let's give, and we're going to give ourselves, let's do the diamond block. And let's give ourselves 64 of those. Now we'll just do diamond block. Okay? So now that I have the diamond block, I can go here. I can drop that down in my inventory. And then I can right click on my agent and I'm going to give him the diamond block. Now he actually has the block. So now if I type S, he should make the square, correct? Let's find out. So there he goes. And diamond's nice because it shines, it shows pretty well. It's nice and smooth. Now we've got our blocks. So this is great problem solving skill. This is something I would do in the classroom with all kids. We'd have a class discussion, especially when we were getting out. Oh no, we've run into a glitch. He can't complete the square, right? Why is that? Oops. Well, there's a block in his way. So what are we going to do with our code? We got to get him up so he can complete the block. So we can come back here into our agent and we can move him forward up one. So now if we go back here and let's just teleport him back to me and then if we go and do the square away he goes he's taken off and let's see what happens this time there he's going going to build a square going to build a square and he jumps up and boom now he's on there so that's how we get the square done now the next question would be do we have to write all this code so if we were to come here and do a different one we could teach the kids logic so if I type in a new chat command we could go here and I could go down here to the loops and we have a forever we have on start we can repeat because we're doing a square we could repeat it four times and then what we can do is we can take some of these blocks from here. Actually, you know what? Let's just leave that there so you have it as an example. We're going to move forward by 10. And then we are going to turn left. Now, the question becomes, where do we place this agent move block to true? Do we need that in the loop? Do we need it somewhere else? You can have that conversation and what we need to do we don't need to have it loop every single time so we can just put it right there that it's true all right and the same thing for this agent move up block where do we need that does this need to be in the loop or does it need to be down below oh I grabbed the wrong one there didn't I 
No, not that one either. Agent is going to move forward. Do we need it here? Or do we need it down here? And these are the things that you can have your kids work through in the challenges. So now when I write this logic, we should get a square again. Let me go ahead and teleport him to me, and then let's go and run logic. And away he goes here, building the square. And so we can start to teach kids you can write code much more effective and quicker and easier once we start to realize what we can do with these other blocks of code. There we go. And so we can have these conversations. I mean, if we were to put this in here, you know, and don't be afraid to show this with kids. So I put this up here. You know, let's find out what happens. So I'm going to bump up here. I'm going to bring them to me, and let's do the logic. Let's find out if they made a mistake. And this is the beauty of Minecraft. You can't hurt anything. It doesn't cost you anything. We can bump up here, and you can see what happens. Every he's going forward 10, he's turning left, and then he's going up a block. And so this is great for kids to kind of visually see what happens with our code. So we don't have a square. We kind of have this ongoing pyramid of sorts. So the next challenge from here, which I'm not going to document, would be, Get the kids to create a square, but a box. And so how do you get him to build up to create, say, a four-block tall structure using this code? So this is just one way in which you can get things going, creating a square, using code connection, getting the thinking, the collaboration, and problem solving, and getting kids engaged in the content. All right, guys, I hope you found this helpful. Let me know what you think, what you create, what you do, and as always, stay awesome.